Hi everyone, welcome back to College Minds YouTube channel. Today we're beginning a series of videos all about preparing for your advanced placement exams. In each video, we'll present a brief overview of the subject test along with our top tips for preparing for each test. If you're taking the AP exams this spring, you won't want to miss this series of videos. And of course, don't forget that if you're applying to college soon, visit us online to sign up for a free account. We're a free guidance resource that calculates your chances of getting into specific colleges and offers free profile recommendations, essay guidance, and much more. To kick things off for this video, we're going to talk about the AP Biology exam. The Biology exam is one of the more common exams taken among self-studiers and enrolled students alike. In 2016, 5% of the 4.7 million students taking AP exams took the Biology exam. If you're interested in taking AP Bio, you won't want to miss this video packed with all of our top prep tips for this particular science-focused exam. Let's get started. The AP Biology course focuses on developing your scientific inquiry and reasoning skills while, of course, building on the core scientific principles, theories, and processes that govern living organisms and biological systems. Because the base of scientific knowledge is so rapidly expanding through discovery and research, the Biology AP course focuses on lasting conceptual understandings within the field of biology and the specific content that supports those understandings. The course encourages students and teachers alike to spend less time on simple factual recall and more time on inquiry-based learning along with the development of those core scientific reasoning skills. While taking the AP Biology exam, you may use a simple four-function calculator. You're also going to be provided with a list of formulas, which is available for your review in Appendix B of the official College Board course description, which we're going to link to below this video. We're also going to link to a complete list of calculator guidelines and the acceptable models of calculators from the College Board's calculator policy. The AP Biology exam is one of the longer AP exams. It clocks in at right around three hours. The exam is comprised of two sections. The first section spans one hour and 30 minutes and accounts for 50% of your total score on the exam. It contains 60 multiple choice questions, some of which come in sets of questions and some of which stand alone. The second section of the exam is the dreaded free response section, which also lasts for one hour and 30 minutes and accounts for the remaining 50% of your score on the exam. That section is divided into two long essays, one of which is going to be lab or data driven. It also contains four short response essays that require paragraph length responses. It's up to you to budget your time on this section. The College Board recommends spending 10 minutes reading, 10 to 25 minutes on each long essay, and 3 to 10 minutes on each shorter free response. The AP Biology exam is a tough one to master, but many students pass it with average scores. In 2019, 64.7% of students who took the AP Bio exam received a score of 3 or higher. Of these, only 7.2% of students received the top score of 5, and another 22% scored a 4. Over one-third of all test takers received a score of 3, contributing greatly to the exam's pass rate. Almost another third of students received a score of 2, and then 8.8% of test takers scored just a 1 on the exam. For more information about the AP Bio exam and the associated course, AP Biology, including a full course description that can help to guide your studying and understanding of the knowledge that is required for the exam, you don't want to miss the College Board's official course and exam description that, as I said before, is linked in the comments below this video. So now that you know the general format of the test, you're probably wondering what exactly you can do to increase your chances at getting a great score, one of those fours or fives. The first thing to do is to study the material. Studying the course material is probably the most obvious thing you can do to prepare for the exam, but in order to study the material well and efficiently, you'll need a pretty deep understanding of the course outline, which once again is available in that all-important course description linked below this video. The knowledge you'll need will encompass both course content, meaning specific knowledge of scientific principles, theories, processes, and also science practices that mean the skills developed for exploring science in a laboratory setting. As far as course content goes, you'll need to have a deep understanding of the three big ideas of AP Biology, which are as follows. Big idea number one is evolution. The process of evolution drives the diversity and unity of life. Big idea two is energetics. Biological systems use energy and molecular building blocks to grow, reproduce, and maintain a dynamic homeostasis. Big idea three, which is information storage and transmission. Living systems store, retrieve, transmit, and respond to information essential to life processes. There's also big idea four, which is systems interactions. Biological systems interact, and these systems and their interactions exhibit complex properties. 
These core four big ideas will be incorporated into the study of each unit of the AP Biology course, and then of course the AP Biology exam that you take at the end of the course. Here are the units of study for the course and the exam weighting of each one. A chart that shows the spiraling of the big ideas through each of the units is available in the course description. That chart will give you a better idea of which unit touches on each of those big ideas. In addition to the content that I described before, there are six science practices that you'll need to master to really do well in the AP Bio exam. These are mostly addressed through your time working hands-on in the lab, which should account for about 25% of your class time. To gain a better understanding of these skills and how you'll build on them, you want to check out the AP Biology Lab Manual, which we're going to link to alongside the other resources in the comments below this video. The specific science practices that you're expected to develop and understand during the AP Biology course, and of course on the exam, include the following practices. Number one, concept explanation. You should be able to explain biological concepts, processes, and models presented in written format. Practice number two is called visual representations. You need to analyze visual representations of biological concepts and processes. These are the diagrams that you see throughout your textbook. Science practice three is questions and methods. You need to determine scientific questions and methods for solving those questions. Science practice number four is called representing and describing data. And the description is pretty simple. You need to represent and describe data. Science practice number five is statistical tests and data analysis. You need to be able to perform statistical tests and mathematical calculations in order to analyze and interpret data from your findings. Science practice six is argumentation. Develop and justify science arguments using evidence. Your most helpful resources for preparing for the test will be the materials that are available directly through the AP Biology website via the College Board and those available from the official College Board partner, which is Khan Academy. These are the only materials that are guaranteed to be updated for the very latest version of the AP exam. Practice materials and other prep work is available through the AP Classroom Portal, where you can create a free account, which should be very helpful for you. Another thing to do in your studying is simply to practice multiple choice and free response questions. In addition to learning the material, you also want to practice your strategy. It means becoming familiar with the types of multiple choice and free response questions that you can expect on the AP Bio exam. The free response section is an area where you should particularly focus, as many students are a bit unfamiliar with the format of those questions and how they're actually scored according to a rubric. In these questions, you have the opportunity to demonstrate your understanding of key concepts in the context of authentic problems and research, making claims and defending them with sound evidence, and creating insightful connections across big ideas, specifically those big ideas from the course. The College Board specifies that successful students will be able to, quote, clearly connect a biological concept to a larger big idea while using designated science practices and skills, end quote. The following types of prompts can be expected on the Biology AP exam's free response section. For instance, interpreting and evaluating experimental results. That's an eight to 10 point question that will present students with an authentic scenario that's accompanied by data in a table or graph, which they then need to interpret to make some sort of conclusion about the experiment. Another prompt is interpreting and evaluating experimental results with graphing, another 8 to 10 point question that presents students with an authentic scenario accompanied by data in a table. Another example of a free response prompt is scientific investigation. Those will typically be a four point question that presents students with a description of a lab investigation scenario and kind of asks you to determine, according to the scientific method, whether that scenario is feasible or experimentally sound. Another example is conceptual analysis, often a four-point question that presents students with an authentic scenario describing a biological phenomenon with a disruption. Another example, analyze model or visual representation. Another four-point question that presents students with a description of an authentic scenario accompanied by a visual model or representation similar to the diagrams that you would see in your textbook. Another example is analyze data. Once again, a four point question that presents students with data in a graph, table, or other visual representation. You wanna pay close attention to the task verbs that are used in some of these free response prompts. On the AP Biology exam, some of the most common task verbs include calculate, construct, describe, predict, and make a claim. Know precisely what each one of those words is asking you to do in the question. You wanna underline each section of the question circle the task verb, and check off those verbs as you've completed them through writing. Many students lose points by simply forgetting to include one part of a multi-part free response question. Also, as you complete the free response questions, just make sure to keep an eye on the time. 
Though you will be reminded of time remaining by the exam proctor in the room that day, you will not be forced to move on to another question. That's up to you. Remember that you should spend roughly 20 to 25 minutes on each long answer essay and three to 10 minutes on each short answer. Make sure that you stay on track to address each section of every question by looking at all those task verbs. No points can be awarded for answers left completely blank when time runs out. For examples of the scoring rubric that are used on the free response sections, make sure to read the sample exam questions and the scoring guidelines provided once again in that very helpful course description linked below. Another tip is just to know the exam day specifics. If you're enrolled in an AP class, your teacher will generally discuss testing with you well in advance of the test. Still, if your teacher has not mentioned exam registration during the spring semester, you should definitely confirm with your teacher no later than March 1st that you are indeed registered for the AP Biology exam. If you are not enrolled in an official AP class through your school and you still want to take one or more AP exams, power to you, you are going to need to locate a testing center. To get started, speak with your school's AP coordinator or similar staff member no later than March 1st. If you're not sure who that person would be, you can ask a guidance counselor or someone in the administration office to identify them. That AP coordinator should be able to tell you if your desired AP exams will be offered at your school or will be able to provide you with some direction for locating them elsewhere, typically at another school somewhere in your area. Each year, AP exams are offered over the course of two weeks in May. Here's a list of materials that you should remember to bring to help you get set up for success on exam day. The first core ones are a watch, a snack, and a water bottle. You also want to think about bringing number two pencils and black or dark blue colored pens, a government or school issued identification, an SSD student accommodation letter, if applicable, if you need accommodations, your six digit school code, a ruler or straight edge if you're taking an AP physics exam specifically, and a calculator. As we said, you can use a simple four function calculator for the AP bio exam. For more information about AP exams, check out all of the College Vine blog posts on the subject linked below. Thanks again for tuning in today. And if you're taking the biology AP exam this spring, best of luck with studying. Check into this next week for more AP prep tips.